Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Uh, I am doing a little something on my own here. I'm trying to learn video editing, so I'm doing a video. And this is what I'm going to call my corner, My Lar Memories. Uh, these are comic books that some would consider key issues. I just enjoy them. Uh, I know some are worth money. Uh, I'm not trying to kid myself and say they're not. But I wanted to share them with you. If you guys have cool stuff, I know you guys post all the time, the Old Guys Network or other places, you know, let us know what you have. Uh, post videos. We're happy to see it all. Uh, so this is just me showing you what I have. Uh, this is a small sample. I have other boxes, but I'm not going to bore everyone just yet. I hopefully do, you know, a few things down the line. So let's start off right now. This is Megaton number five. Now you're saying, who is Megaton? What is Megaton? Why should we care about Megaton? Okay. So it's an independent con in the 80s. It uh, was a starting spot for uh, people like Eric Larson, uh, Rob Liefeld. Uh, this book contains early Rob Liefeld art in it. Subsequent issues feature early art for Youngblood. Uh, it's pretty cool to see how the comic started and uh, where it wound up when it went to Image. Uh, one comic has just, I think, a house ad for it. The other one has a secondary story featuring Youngblood. Uh, I'll show that at a later date, but this is just uh, he had very small art in this one. Thunder Agents number one. Thunder Agents, I didn't realize had such a cult following uh i'm part of a group on facebook uh that's dedicated to thunder agents uh, i think it's pretty cool it's basically a un uh sanctioned group and they give people these different powers uh, this is issue number one from tower comics uh, as you can see here some damage it's it's pretty banged up uh, but that's how well you'll see with a lot of these how i'm able to afford them uh cool book really cool book they made some spin-offs for each individual character uh, down the line but this is at number one of the team together magic comics from 1940 uh believe it or not i pulled this out of a dollar bin uh joe's told the story a few times uh with our videos that we were in a storage unit going through a bunch of long boxes i found this uh it's mandrake the magician i was a huge defenders of the earth fan that's how i heard about mandrake along with like the phantom Lothar, Flash Gordon. Uh, so this is, it's pretty cool to have like an original Mandrake book. Like this is, this is legit his stuff back in the day. Uh, 1940, not bad shape. I mean, there's the staples that are rusted a little bit, but just a really cool book to have. Spy Man, as seen on Comics for Breakfast. I could thank Jake Semink for making me look for this. Uh, spy Man is a spy with a hand down here. That has all sorts of gadgets and weapons. Uh, you can find out more information on Jason's Comics for Breakfast. Cool book. Uh, Jack Kirby work when he was doing stuff with Harvey. Uh, I like it a lot. It's, you know, not the, the, the greatest story you're ever going to see, but uh, it's still pretty darn cool. Following that, Three Rocketeers. Also, Jack Kirby with Harvey. Uh, I just like seeing his work outside of the big two like when he had a little more freedom to do you know offbeat things uh, this is just it's kind of a classic look you can tell it's from the 60s uh, with space but i i love it i think the art's cool infinity inc annual number one todd mcfarland cover uh, i collect a lot of early todd mcfarland stuff i believe uh, you can correct me if i'm wrong in the comments down below this is one of his first covers ever you can see you know it's good art it's clean it's not like the stuff and i'm not dogging this stuff we did for spider-man because obviously you know that was very popular and i liked it too but uh a lot different isn't it from his spider-man art invaders number eight the coming of union jack got this out of a dollar bin now some people might not call this a key issue i do because i think union jack's cool to me he is the british captain america uh, and that's just a cool outfit. I mean, I'm, I have the Doctor Strange when they had him put that, like, a blue mask on just like this. But I think it's cool. I think Union Jack's cool. Uh, fight me on it. Uh, Fantastic Four Annual Number One. This is a really, really, really cool book. Uh, this is a book that's being held together by magic and good intentions because there's tape down the side and i tried opening it a little bit and i almost uh had a heart attack because i didn't want to mess this thing up anymore so 
Uh, thankfully, you can read these comics now online. Uh, Jack Kirby, you know, early Fantastic Four, Spider-Man. Like, look at the little lines of the webbing there. Like, that's that's cool. Uh, Submariner, when he was, of course, being a creep to them, as he was back in the day. Really, really cool book. <laughs> the Man of Steel, seventeen. Now, what's the Man of Steel seventeen so important for? Because, folks, this is the first appearance of Doomsday. Doomsday, the alien sent to Earth to get rid of Superman, which he did do, albeit unsuccessfully, if you looked at it in the long run. But after readers got through the story, they got to see this. Who is that punching through a steel wall? It's Doomsday, folks. It's Doomsday. Uh, cool book. You know, the, I know it's worth a couple of bucks. Uh, I didn't have this when I was uh, collecting at the time. I had a couple of the other ones. Uh, this one I, I just didn't catch, uh, but I was able to get it later on. Captain Action, number one. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. What I know about Captain Action is that he was a toy. And I believe you could put on different costumes. You could turn into different characters and stuff like that. Uh, it's a cool book. You know, I don't, I'm not crazy into Captain Action, but it's a, a really nice cover. And I know there's still, you know, a lot of fans of Captain Action out there. And any man who could tell Superman to stand back, this is a job for a Captain Action company. So stand down, Superman. You got to have some cojones to do that. And to keep like a Jaguar or whatever that is, a Puma maybe? I'll say Jaguar. On a leash? Come on, folks. The Jack Kirby Harvey run continues. This is Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. So this is the original. These are the two uh, who started it all. I mean, these are the two who started it all. And to have them working together on a brand new book, brand new for the 60s, uh, Fighting American. He looks a little like, uh, oh, what's his name? Citizen Steel. But, uh, you know, he has a sidekick, which looks a little like Bucky, who obviously uh, lost his balance when a... A uh, chubby man bounced out of a vault. That happens. You know, don't get on his case. Those bank doors are heavy. It's a cool book. Uh, I'm not going to say it's it's the greatest thing that ever happened, but it's a very cool book to have. Now, I love Charlton Comics. I think Charlton Comics are very cool. I love the story behind them, that they were pretty much made, I think, in later days, in a bowling alley. Uh... This is Attack, Battle Cry of War, number one, a special edition. Uh, very pulp kind of book. Uh, this one, I believe, is from the early 60s. Uh, it's in, you know, kind of rough shape. I got it, I think, for about $5. Uh, but still a very cool book. Charlton books, uh, uh, like I said, I just dig them. So now here, Coyote, number 11. Kiss me, sly, and kill me. Now, did I buy it for this cover because it's people kissing? No, I didn't do that. It's cool, but I didn't buy it for that. Why did I buy this book? Because this book is the first Marvel artwork for Todd McFarlane. And you can sort of see, you know, like I showed you that cover before for Infinity Inc., uh, it's nice work. It's, but it's not like the stuff he was doing later on. Um, I didn't know. I don't know much about Coyote. I couldn't tell you one thing or another when I read this secondary story. I was like, uh, okay, Todd McFarlane art. I mean, you could write anything, but uh, people still buy it because Todd McFarlane art. And finally, Amazing Spider-Man 360, the first appearance, cameo appearance of Carnage, Cletus Cassidy. Uh, I was not. And I am not a huge Carnage guy. Uh, he just goes around killing people. He's a crazy guy who likes to kill people. Uh, it's pretty basic. But, you know, it, it's a cool book to have because he's always going to be popular. Uh, I know he's going to be in the new Venom movie, so folks are always wondering what he's going to do next. Uh, a nice book. I got it a while ago before the, the craze really began. I think I paid $10 for this. Uh, I'm not too sure how much it's worth now, but I think it's worth a few more bucks than that. So, this is some... 
of the key issues. I'll post the stuff that you like. I hope Joe posts. Uh, we'll do some videos together, and he can do some too of uh, his key books. Uh, I think it's you know I, I love seeing dollar bin stuff because that's my thing. I, I love going through dollar bins. Joe's too. Uh, that's why we are the dollar bin bandits. But you know. You could drive the Ford, but sometimes it's nice to show off the Mercedes, you know what I mean?